Celtics falling to the Atlanta Hawks 120 to 118, a game in which the Celtics led by 30 points in the second quarter. Uh, Eddie, what did you see in the second half where this thing just got away from them? Well, I think it started getting away from them at the end of that second quarter. Um, just the defense. I don't think the attention to detail was there defensively. Offensively, you just get lax. They, they went up by 30 points. They just thought it was one of those games they were going to be able to walk through. It was going to be comfortable. But remember, those, those are professionals. They get paid the same way you get paid. And, you know, and they have a job that they have to do. They have a coach that has to do his job the same way. And they never quit. That You got to give them credit. But I'm going to tell you, second quarter, 34 points. Third quarter, 34 points. Fourth quarter, 30 points. That's a little bit too much right there. Like, you know, you start breaking that down, what's that, 98 points in three quarters. It's going to be tough to win basketball games when you're giving up that amount of points and, and then making it easy. And then you're not doing anything on the other end as well. You just get complacent. You're not sharing the ball the way you did in the first half. It's one of those games where they're going to have to learn from this loss, but I thought they would be able to learn from a win. But, you know, it, it wasn't in the cards. They, they, took, they took that L. Let's go back to uh, the final minute of this game because, again, the Celtics, they did have the lead still. Even though they gave up that lead, they, they went back and forth with Atlanta and they were able to uh, take a one-point lead. So you had a minute to go. Celtics up one. DeJounte Murray uh, just able to get by uh, Al Horford and, and give Atlanta the lead. Yeah, well, that was just a clear ISO right there. They got the matchup they wanted. DeJounte Murray getting to the basket, not settling. But right here, just look. What, what's going on? Porzingis, what are you doing? Okay, you're going to set a screen. Well, it wasn't really a screen. It didn't really do anything. Oh, you get pushed off your line to go set a screen. They switched. You really don't get nothing. Now everybody's just standing around looking. You know, a bad possession. And, you know, that happens within the uh, course of a game. But right here, I, I, I will say this. As much as I'm saying, like, damn, offensive rebound, you got to make sure you box out and get that rebound. It, it just wasn't – if you look at where Al Horford got pushed underneath the basket, a lot of times the, the defensive big man uh, – I mean, the offensive big man has the opportunity to get that rebound because of where he got pushed underneath the basket. All right, take a look at these numbers presented by the Massachusetts Health Connector. Losing mass health, need health insurance for any reason? Visit the Massachusetts Health Connector. Act now and stay covered at mahealthconnector.org. And uh, you heard Drew mention it towards the end of the uh, broadcast. The 30-point lead that they gave up tonight, that is uh, the biggest blown lead since 1996-97 for this Celtics team. Uh, let's bring in Scal and Drew now. And Scal, I'll start with you because we're just going through some of the highlights there. But specifically late in the game, why, why is it that we see this team kind of slow down? That's going to be the question going into tomorrow. Why, why do they slow down and play that kind of ISO basketball when moving the ball for them seems to work so well earlier in the game? So, I mean, every fourth quarter, the game slows down. It's, to me, it's, it's not that. It's like the lack of force to break open to get a catch. You know, you're holding the ball. You can be holding the ball with your shoulders over your over your toes, ready to drive it, you know, with some force to it, to you and, and go right through guys. Or you can kind of just, like, limp into it. So, like, it's you can do the exact same thing, but you could do it with no force and it won't work. Or you can, like, break open, get the ball, be aggressive, aggressive mindset, get downhill. Like, Jalen Brown, he had an ISO late in the game. He had a nice little pull-up. Dejounte Murray had a an ISO and and he knocked down a shot or got by Al Horford. So I don't need us to. I, I would love for us for, to fly around, but I just think for about 12, 14, 16, 18, 22 minutes, we played with zero force, zero force, and that's when the Atlanta Hawks chipped away and got back in the game. That pace thing, Giles, also has to do with how you defend, right? It's, it's harder to run off a make than off a miss, and the Celtics were defending really well in the first half for the most part, sure. and then that kind of stopped. What the numbers say is they do really slow down as the game goes on. Tenth and first quarter pace, and it's like 20th in the second, 22nd in the third, and second to last in the fourth quarter, but their clutch time stats are really good fifth in that rating so I think that might be a little bit overblown but there were a couple times where it was really slow tonight like Tatum got an eight second violation yeah. that that was a, a little bit alarming so I don't know well never this finish, is what I do know. never finish a statement with I don't know I don't I mean you're the expert but I'm, <laughs> I'm just disappointed hey, hey guess what though scale I'm gonna pick it up for him because I do know all right this is the, the, the okay. problem you know 34 points in the second quarter 34 points in the third quarter 
30 points in the fourth quarter, right? You're giving up. If, if you're not scoring, I understand that. And you're not going to make every shot. You're not going to execute perfect every time down the court. But what you can do is at least defend and give a little bit of resistance. 34, 34, and 30 is no resistance. And you said 22 minutes. I think it was a whole second half, okay? And on top of that, we didn't move the ball. We didn't share the ball. We had success, 17 uh, assists in the first half, only four assists in the second half, a lot of ISO basketball, a lot of standing around. And, and then the guys weren't making shots. And once, once you open that door, you know this gal, it's like missed free throws. Seemed like everybody started missing free throws. You start missing these threes that was going in earlier in the game, and that's all you're doing is taking them. You start missing more of those. You start missing assignments defensively. That's where you should be able to say, hey, we're cutting that off. We're not going to miss those because you could control that. I just felt like defensively we didn't – we weren't on, on, on top of our game. We felt like the game was over once we went up 30 points. Yeah, I did too. I 100% thought this game was over. 68 to, to 38? Like, how is this game not over? And all of a sudden it's just – you know, I don't, I don't love that style of basketball ever. I don't love – it's not so much walking the ball up. I just don't love when, when players are not attacking and the ball isn't popping. How about – we might have had one of the greatest Celtic possession all season. It was like Tatum to inside to Horford. and went out, went all yep. the way around the horn, and Mihailuk hit the three. So, like, yep. man, how do you go from that <laughs> to the other side? And, you know, it is a weakness. It's very similar to the Cleveland game in the fourth quarter, and they started feeling it, but – it is definitely, if you had to say there is one weakness of this team, on the contrary to what Big Perk thinks our bench, it's not our bench, it's the ability to take our foot off the gas and it just like think that we could just coast to the, at the end. And it's with no Derek White and no Drew Holiday to right the ship a little bit, we really missed those guys today. All right. Just Dallas. don't get too cool for the radio, man. That's all I'm saying. Don't ever get too cool. All right, what do you well, mean uh, too cool for the radio? What's that mean? Oh, Eddie? I mean, you, well, you know, I'm gonna tell. See, man, I, I gotta explain everything to y'all, yeah. man. Where you know, Amina at? I need Amina back because she know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I, I feel like I'm in. An, I'm like in the middle of this one. I don't even know what that means. Too cool for the radio? No, but like, mean, I, I, I'm too cool. I don't even need my song to be played on the radio. I'm too cool for the radio. I'm, I'm fresh already. We 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 got it handled right here. That's what that means. No, you're not too cool for the radio. You want to get radio okay. play. You want to make sure that everybody know what you say, how you doing it, and what you doing. That's all I'm trying to say, man.